Nate and I would like to thank the Niagara Corporation for sponsoring today's episode of Let Me Tell You Something. Niagara is the country's leading manufacturer of water-conserving plumbing products, including toilets that reduce water usage by up to 60%. Niagara products were originally designed just for plumbing professionals, but they're now available for homeowners as well. So, if you're remodeling your home or constructing new, check out NiagaraCorp.com to get long-lasting water savings. What's up, y'all? It's your boy Isaiah Stanback back in the building for another episode of Let Me Tell You Something. Man, I tell you what. Yeah. I tell you what, man. How are I, you doing today? Just tell me how you doing, man. Tell the world how they, you doing. You know what? I'm, I'm doing good, Nate. You know why? Right. I woke up. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I woke up, Nate. I, you know, everybody don't have the opportunity to say that. You know, right. so I woke up. Wow. I'm healthy. You know, body's a little beat up, but. Is beat up because of the, the the grace that I had of the career that I was able to have, right. you know, the the athleticisms. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'm I'm happy, man. My family's good. I got a house. I got food. Got transportation. Got jobs. Wow. I mean, what? But why would I complain, Nate? I mean, we can always find something to complain about. Right. But why? Yeah. Don't you know? I'm along them same lines, man. Uh, a lot of people tell me sometimes. They ask me, "How you doing?" I, I'm doing great. I'm doing. And I've had friends ask me over the years, man, every time I ask you that, every time you say, I'm great, I'm doing fine, I'm okay. Do you ever have a bad day? I say, I have bad moments, but never a bad day. Tell, yeah. tell the people about that, Nate. Well, how, how is it that you can have bad moments <laughs> and, and, st- and not have bad days? People, help, under, help people understand conceptually what that means. What are you, what are you getting at when you say that? Uh, it, it's, I, I've been like this all kind of all my life, you know, uh, but I've just, over the past few years, I understand, you know, I've always had grace. That grace you talk about, waking up, God. Yes, sir. And so yeah. that grace, you know, I, I, I've i always felt, so, it was always something there bigger than me uh, and wanting something to be better. I mean, you you get in arguments, you get in difficulties, you may have financial situations, but that that right there shouldn't dictate what radiates from you, you know. You know, that that bad moment, that bad time, you know, that's why you have the ability to think. So I tell people, if you if you have the ability to think and reason and you surround yourself with people that are intelligent, but most of all calm people, you can figure out a, a whole lot of things. And what you can't control and what you can't take a hold of, you get at the God. But what you sure. can control and what you can take a hold of, you grab it, you concentrate on it, you work through it, then you move on. That's why I never had a Nate. completely bad day. I like that. Yeah. I like that. And see, and along those same lines, Nate, I kind of had a, I had to self check myself. You ever had to just self check yes. yourself? Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, I have a little self check from time to time, Nate, because I was just, I was being ungrateful. Mm. For, for my health and my body. And I had to make a decision last week. Mm-hmm. I was like, you know what? I can't just rely on the grace that God's given me in terms of this, this, this temple that he's given me, this right. body. I, I have to, I have to do the best I can with this thing. Right. And, and I got inspired. I was like, you know, I got to start, I got to start training myself. I train a lot of other people, but I got to start training myself again. So I started doing a little something every day. You know, all the things right. that I preach, I had to start really just doing it myself again. Right. Not that I have never done it before, but I had to remind myself. Mm-hmm. It's one of the hardest things about transitioning out of competitive sports, as you, I'm sure you very well know. Yes, sir. There's nothing, nothing that compares to that competitiveness. That's right. Nothing at all. That's right. When we were training, okay, not working out, Nate, but when we were training – the whole thing, at least that I can speak for myself, that drove me to eat well, that drove me right. to lift work and work out hard, was in preparation for beating that next person that I was going to compete against. That's right. That's that's what drove me. I look, I visualized myself kicking somebody's butt. I visualized myself manhandling somebody, running faster than somebody, just fully dominating them. That's what drove me when I was doing my training. Wow. Wow. And when that's and when that's gone, Nate, 
when that's gone, it's like, what the heck am I like for what? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like for what? Like, what? Like, I work in the gym all day, every day. You know this. Yeah. And I love motivating and getting other people right and helping them attain their goals and using my experiences to to benefit them and their journeys. But like once that fire was gone, Nate, like I had no motivation. Mm. And I see how you try to drive your kids and feel they deal yeah. with positive things. And, 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 and I say, I'm shocked, man. I, I need I need to lay hands on you, dog, because you right here talking about you lost <laughs> that, that competitive edge like that for us, getting yourself nice. physically ready. You're always mentally ready. You're always spiritually yeah. ready, but you lost that physical. Come on, Listen Zell. Man. Come on, come on, Listen man. Up. I see, you, a, I see, you, I see as, you throwing the hat up and trying to get Zeusy like you know what I'm saying. Look, 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 what's what's that shirt say, Nate? You versus that shirt says you versus, versus you. you. Wow. You versus you. Wow. And that's what I had to start reminding myself. I'm like, you know what, dog, going out there. Like this isn't about. I'm not an aesthetics person. Right. I don't care a whole lot about the aesthetics. Right. But as we're working in this media space now, right? right. You and I both are on a, on a platform with the Cowboys, right. and and I'm I'm trying to level up and right. hopefully see some other opportunities down the road. And one thing I noticed, I was like, all the cats that I look up to and admire in that space have changed their mindset to to be driven by their appearance. Right, 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 and. Now, this this body, this temple that they have, you know, speak on like Shannon Sharp. Right. Shannon Sharp's all in the news right now. Right. Shannon Sharp's more, he was always a genetic specimen, as right. you very well know. That's right. But he's more jacked up now physically, I mean, talking about, about being diesel, than he was when he played. Yes. But I started thinking, I'm like, that's his playing field. The media is his playing field now. So, like, he's preparing for his on-air presence. Wow. And to your boy, Neon Dion, look good, feel good, play good, yeah. right? Yeah. Look good, feel good. Dress good. You know, and perform. Yeah. Yeah, dress good and perform, yes. you know? So, I watch him. Uh, who else was I watch? I mean, like, The Rock. Yeah. I take I take some inspiration from The Rock. I'm like, well, what the heck this dude. Well, I know he's getting paid to be big and swole because that's his that's his characters most of the time. But he's preparing. He gets himself up at three, four o'clock in the morning and gets after it because he wants to look good on air. He wants to look good on on, on media. So I'm like, all right, in I gotta figure world, it out, Nate. If I in a world that always are always judging what you say, how you look, and how you say it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. You know, and then and then on top of that, Nate, my wife makes me look bad. Right. My wife gets up. If my wife can't sleep, Nate, she'll get up and go to the gym. Wow. Wow. Middle of the night. I think she, she did it today. She she couldn't sleep. Three o'clock in the morning, she just get up. I can't sleep. I'm gonna go to the gym. Right. That's great. Now 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 mind you, Nate, we have a gym that I built at the house, right. but we ain't gonna talk about that right now. <laughs> yeah. She buys past that. She she walks through that. And then she takes her butt to the gym. Right. But now I was just, I'm just, I'm just doing some thinking. And that's so that's that's where I'm at right now, Nate. So far, I'm I'm about six days in Mm-mm. of trying to get myself back to Zeus status. Right. I know you like to call me Zeus yeah, from time to time, right. and I I didn't feel very Zeus ish. Zeus ish. I tell you, ladies here, man. Over the last two years, man, uh, I went from like three twenty, three twenty two. I weighed the other day at 288. All my, you know, high cholesterol, the bad, all that was great. It was like 10, 12 points below everything. And uh, I thank God first, you know, but to the point where you control what you can, man. You never lose that drive, you know. Uh, You hear how Michael Jordan, you know, always goes back to this dude who, that he got cut for when he was in high school. All right. And I always go back to bless his heart. I don't know if this gentleman alive or dead now, but Kevin Lewis, who when I was in the eighth, ninth grade, the coach say, I'm going to put this dude against you. You know, you're a big one. I'm going to put this dude against you. <laughs> and I bent up. I bent Kevin up. I'm like, no, nah, dog. And the competitiveness you're talking about, 
has always been in me, you know? Yeah. And, and this is the funny thing about it. Come in camp, half out of shape. I want no half in shape. I was half out of shape. <laughs> just doing just enough, you know? You was on that slim, uh, that slim yeah. slow, not slim fast, yeah, huh? Yeah, and I would tell folks, he'd be like, if, you know, rookies and first and second year guy be looking at me like, wow, you know, look at this big old fat dude. <laughs> And now, you know, we get in training camp and they be they be wilding out of being mini camps back then. These should be bloody. Mini camps should yeah. be bloody back then. You know, they, they oh yeah, I, I'm gonna handle this dude. Then by the time training camp roll around, they look at me like, wow, what what happened? Yeah. Dog, dog. It's money time. Yeah. yeah it's money time, dog. It's time for you to get. Yeah. I, and I tell them, I say, you you know me all during the offseason as the fat guy, the big joker, the prankster, the guy that's about to get cut. Let me give you my real title. I'm a D9, bro. I move, uh. I move, I move human bodies for a living. And you finna get jacked up out of here and deposited over there because Emmett got to move. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> they used to look at me like, I said, all right. You won't be here in about three weeks. And I tell some of you, you won't be here in about three weeks. Because after I get through Dang. with you and these preseason games prove that you ain't deserving to be on this team, <laughs> I used to be cozy. I used to be hard on dudes. Why are you taking their heart like that, Nate? Uh, because they, they don't thought cause mini camp, because OTAs, you know, yeah. or even early in mini camp, they'd be like, wow, you know. They thought they had a chance. They thought they had a chance because that competitive spirit you're talking about. You're right. That, com- that switch was an argument. Yes, yeah. so I'm like, bro. I, you know, I can imagine. Why, why, I have a question for you, Nate. Why is it that, and this goes for everything, why is it that we just can't keep that switch on? Uh, no, sir. No, sir. No, sir. You'll be dead. <laughs> the bottom line. Bottom line. I'm sub- and I'm not and I'm not joking. You you know how I feel I know, about Mr. I know, Jones. I know. You know how I feel about I know. Mr. Jones. You Correct. know I love him to death. Mr. Jones in his 70s, late 70s. I I wonder how some of these dudes are still alive because yeah. of their drive. They never sleep and always sharp as attack. I probably wouldn't be, if I had that same drive that I had at certain points in my career as a football player, if I had that switch on all the time, I'd be out of control, bro. I'd probably be sitting here babbling. You'd be like, Nate, Nate, calm (laughs) down. Center yourself. You know what I'm saying? But, but it, but it truly is a switch though. Like you, you, you literally feel yourself going to grind mode. Like it's, it's a whole nother being, whether it be, in the weight room, once I get them headphones on, Nate, yeah. and I and I got my playlist on, like, I don't care who's in the space. Like, that's, I'm in the zone, and I can feel myself getting, if I'm thinking about certain things that are motivating or things that have pissed me off or something that I'm preparing for, like, right now, I'm getting prepared for the preseason, yeah. right? And we'll talk about that, but, like, I'm getting myself ready for the preseason. I'm like, okay, we're going to, we're going to camp. Yes, sir. Now, you know, you, you and I, we got camp. We got work to yeah. do at camp, so... We're going to camp. I'm going to be on TV. Like, it's a big year for me. Yes, it so, is. Like, yes, it is for you. Yeah, man. I'm, so, I'm getting, so I'm getting my mind right. So now I'm getting back into that competitive mode where I'm like, okay, Isaiah, take your attention. You're not, you're not running around and, you know, running away from men in tights. You're not hitting people. Right. You're not slamming people. You're not running past people. But your competition now is everybody else that's on TV. Right. And if that's, if that's where you want to be, then get your body right so that you can present yourself in the best way possible. So. That's where I'm at, Nate. So when I'm wow. in the weight room now, I'm just wow. Now I'm back. Now I, I feel it's different, right? There's times where I just lift weights and it's like okay, but like when I'm in that training mode, like that's why I tell people there's a difference between working out and training. Yes, yes. Can you it's, can you explain it to us? Working out. So, and so training. working out, working out. You might have the the greatest of intent to go in there and do the best you can to get your body and your mind prepared for whatever it is that you're trying to do, whether you're trying to lose weight, whether you're trying to gain muscle, whether you're trying to get ready for performance, whatever it might be, that's working out. Training is intentfully doing those things. Like 
Coach Willingham used to tell me, I don't want y'all to be focused. I want y'all to be fine focused. Meaning that I want you to take this circle right here that everybody else is operating in. And I want you to dial that thing down. Right. 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 right and I want you right. to be so, so zeroed in on it that, that you don't even notice everything else on the outside. Like you're just, you're locked in. You're completely locked in. It's no different than for some people might be saving money for a house or saving money for a car or, or their kids, you know, college. Like, guess what? Starbucks, whatever. Like that's to the side. That same money, I'm dropping it in my in my savings. This over here, no, no, no. I'm not doing that experience. I'm dropping it in my savings. Like that is fine focus and being intentful, intent on what it is that you're trying to attain. So when we're in that mode in whatever regard in your life, but for me, particularly right now, like that's where I'm getting to. I'm getting back to that. And it feels so different than just existing and being, oh, yeah, OK, I need to look all right or I need to be prepared for this. It's different. It's a different mode. Yeah, I'm with you, man. I'm, you know, uh, well, this is very organic today. I mean, we we were supposed to be talking about the Cowboys and <laughs> this thing got on Isaiah, his five focus. And, uh, you know, I, you know. What what I what I expect from people is, especially from adults, mature adults, is, uh, you know, y'all give us this platform, the Dub Network does, and all our sponsors, and 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 I appreciate that, man. And sometimes, uh, you know, and I'm just glad when we get these moments to be real, that y'all can see uh, and yeah. hear what we're truly thinking, you know, because. Yes, the Cowboys are great. You know, you know. Uh, I, I saw a picture of uh, Luka Doncic, like you know, lost eight hundred pounds. You know, uh, the Stars uh, got thumped by. You know, uh, did they get thumped by your team? The, the Stars. The stars, yeah. No, they got they got scraped up. But Las Vegas went on to to destroy Florida. Okay, I'm sorry, your Florida team got destroyed. No, I, you know, I, I don't do that. No, no, I'm not a hockey guy. But I'm just saying, the Rangers are doing well. Yeah, and so DFW is on the move, going the thumbs right. up, and uh, but I'm just glad that for the guys and girls and you know young people that come in and listen to me and Zell because I, I think when we talk about things about life, focus, uh, the desire to be the best at what you're trying to do, you know, get the fine tune, the fine focus that. Coach uh, Willingham and Isaiah is talking about those are the things in life that's going to make you successful. You know, not 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 letting a certain situation in your life control you. You know, you're going you're going to get in an argument with a friend uh, or your mom or your dad or your brother or your sister, but you can't walk around all day. And what, what I've learned, especially from my wife, you know, especially if you're going to say a Christian, me and her can have some difficulties, can have some words. But five yeah. minutes later, I'm like, baby, do you need this? Do you need that? Yeah, I'm gonna still a little hot about what we just got talked about, <laughs> but that ain't gonna stop me from taking care of my wife. You know, yeah. if, you know, that ain't gonna, you know, that, that you know, if, if, if the house need painting, it, it's still gonna get painted. Cause, you know, no matter what we got up this morning thinking, we know what, what's best for us in the whole picture. You know, so don't, don't, it's all right to have a bad moment. But do not let that define your day. Do not let, you know. How, how, how many guys do you think that you came across? I mean, obviously, you don't have to say no names, but how many guys would you say that you came across that allowed situations to have them to, to allow, they allow situations to mess up their day and ultimately mess up their opportunity because they wouldn't just let it go? I, I, I talked to a guy yesterday. On the phone, one of you know me and him used to be real close, and it 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 made me laugh because he called. I looked at the phone. I said, "Okay, boom. Hey, how you doing, bro?" And uh, they said, "Who is this?" I said, "Well, hey, this is such and such." But it was another guy. I said, well, "What you doing?" He said, "Oh, I, this dude here was over here saying you wouldn't pick up this phone, that you wouldn't return his call, or you wouldn't." And I'm like, no, nah, I'll pick up the phone. I'll return this call. And it, and I didn't know back in Florida, it was a bunch of people. Okay. It was a bunch of people around, and this dude was saying, I wouldn't pick up uh. the phone. He, Nate, Nate think he's too big. Because of a situation that happened years ago, 
It went from a situation, a bad moment that should have been forgotten, that turned into a bad day, that turned into years. And when I picked up the phone and said, how are you doing? And the dude just handed him the phone and said, hey, hey, go Nate. He thought it was you. And I went and said, how you doing? Is everything okay? Da, da, da. You need something? That, but you get what yeah. I'm saying? It, he stopped calling me because of a situation, which I don't even know what it was, turned into a bad moment, a bad day, and a whole bunch of bad years. I'm just giving you yeah. an example of how things can snowball if you don't lock down. The, uh, the Asians have a saying that if you have a situation or a goal that you want to achieve, if you can get with like minds for around three or four minutes, you can solve that problem. If you would just get together and folk t- wipe everything out, those bad moments, those bad situations, wipe it all out and focus. Like you said, that fine focus. You can solve a lot of the world's problems. And so, and, 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 and so I didn't know, I'm like, why would this dude call me with this situation? One of my other friends would call me. And, and, and so I called him. I said, well, why, why did you call me on his phone? Well, he was, he was dogging you out in front of everybody. He was talking bad about you. And I said, Nate, Nate is not like that. And he called and everybody else like, Looking at looking at the guy now, like wow, man. Yeah. Because of a bad moment, yeah. and so I, I tell people, you know, and my son is the same way. We were out uh, about a year ago, and uh, two years ago, my, and we was talking about a bad time, and my son said, "Nah, uh, uh-uh. uh, nah, I ain't never had a bad day. I may have had some bad moments, but not a bad awesome. day." Where's your peace? Where? I'm not. I, I worship a God that is bigger than me, so I'm not going to tell anybody else to worship that God. That that is your choice, right. but the God that I worship ain't going to let this thing engulf me. He's not. He's not. Now, whatever the situation is, be it living or death, it's not going to engulf me like that. Thank you, man. Like it. I like it. Yeah, man. We know too many people. Um, I see. I see the shirt that you have on there, man. You got get your big dog Larry Allen on, huh? Oh man, he's one of the, my top five uh, offensive linemen. It's Larry Allen, this Jackie uh, shit, Jackie yeah, Slater, yeah. Uh, Hannah, uh, the great left tackle for the Bengals. I can't think of his name, but it's five guys that I always love on. I can't grab the names because my mind is in a different place okay. right now. But Larry Allen is one of those guys. How, how, how and, different uh, was that dude, man? We used to call him the Weebler. He would wobble, but he you, he won't fall down. You couldn't knock him off his feet. You couldn't get him out of line. And then the thing about it, he was so strong that if you, like, say you arm over him and you think you about to get past it, this dude was so strong and so balanced that he could stick his hand out in your chest from the side and pull himself back what? while pushing you back to get back in line with you. Oh, I done seen Larry do some incredible things. I, you know, I've seen where Charles Haley would beat him. Then the next play, Larry would lay hands on him. Charles is just like, hey, man, I'm through practicing today. Because, <laughs> see, Larry ain't going to forget. You may want to stop, in, you know, because this one-on-one pass rush. You may want to stop. <laughs> but Larry waiting to get you in practice, the whole so practice. He's trying to get you so back. Nate, so yeah. when we just finished talking about Larry, said he ain't got he ain't had a bad moment, but he ain't got had no bad day. No, 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 man. No. Nah. Larry Allen was one of the uh I remember him as a rookie. And he just you knew he was special because like I say, man, he would look at us, he wouldn't say nothing. He just have his dip in, he wouldn't say nothing, and he'll be watching us. And you'll tell him something. You had only had to tell him once. Cause he was learning, man. And by the time he started his um his 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 uh second year, him and Big E on the same side, man. I'm telling you, if Big E wouldn't hit that wall, them them would have been them would been Hall of Famers, bro. Together, paired together. That, Big E just barely missed that all century team. Uh Larry Allen, man, I mean, Larry Allen played everything except center. 
everything except center. That's just because he probably didn't want to. He this this dude had feet. He had explosion. He had uh, IQ. He watched film. Uh, I remember a dude from I can't think of this young man name from from New Orleans. Boy, he beat Larry in a game. Man, we came in, and coach was telling Larry da da da. He was just kind of talking to Larry, you know. And uh, man, I looked over there, man. Larry was crying. I'm like, what's wrong, Larry? The dude beat me, man. I need to play him again. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He wanted to play the dude again. I'm like, man, if we'd have put that dude on a jet, he'd have probably went up in there in the New Orleans, man, and snatched that dude up out of his shorts, Jeez. man. He was hot. I was like, wow. Off of one sack. One sack, dog. Jeez. So yeah. Cass is built different, man. <laughs> yeah, he was built. Yeah. He, he, I'm telling you, Michael Jordan, Larry Allen, uh, like I said, Jackie Slater, John Hanna, guys like that, they, they just, they just, bro, they, they, you know, they different. Yeah. They if there different. was one other person that you would say that was as physically impressive as Larry Allen was, who would you even put in that same stratosphere? A, a Big E before he got in the car wreck. Big E changed the way we played. Big E was a rookie. He watched that his rookie year, his his second year in the league. Big E, I, I'm, I, I am telling you, ask Strahan. Strahan, say, should Big E be in the Hall of Fame? He'd be like, yeah, when y'all going to put him in? I'm telling you, Big E. I was blessed, man. I was blessed to be able to play with Eric Williams, Larry Allen, Troy Aikman, uh, Charles Haley, Deion Sanders. I mean, I love Emmett, but these guys here, the, these guys here were different. Yeah. These guys were different. These guys were different. You know, uh, Love Michael to death, but that's my boy. Would take nothing away from. Him. But I'm talking about top five. You can you can line up anywhere. You can call any name. Top five Super Bowl difference making guys because of their will. Now Mike had that will, but he ain't had that athletic ability. Mike just outwork you. Mike just outwork you. Emmett just outwork you. Emmett was a thinker too. But I'm talking about athletic ability, along with being a thinker, along with being a hard worker. These other guys that I named. No, dog. I used to see uh Dion look at a dude. Look how he lined up, Nick. Uh-uh. Something different happened to him. Let me sit to the outside on this dude, because something something ain't right right here. And they'll run a new route or something. Because he done studied this dude. You ain't thinking Dion done studied this dude. Ah, uh, look at that foot forward. Ah, uh, they finna do something different. And look how that he changed his feet. And he called out a play one time. Hey, reverse, reverse, reverse. And he, bro, he hit it so quick, he almost got the ball before the wide receiver did. When he did the reverse, he almost took the hand off. Because he was just so, the little things that he could do and see. You know, and had the athletic ability. See, I could see something sometime, but didn't have the athletic ability to, to to disrupt it. So I had to stay within the game plan. See, I, you got to know who you are and know what you can do. Yeah. Dion had that ability where he could see something. You know, I remember one time we was playing against New York, and he got one of the first times they ever just gave out this award because they didn't have – most value, they had most valuable offensive player, most valuable defensive player, most valuable special teams guy. But well, they gave out another award for Dion because he disrupted the game so bad against New York. Jeez. You know, played wide receiver, played uh, was a punt returner, I played the defensive back position that he, you know, that he was the best at. Dion has got to be one of the top five athletes in the world. Him, people like him, Bo yeah, Jackson. I those those are I different asked the guys, rookies, man. I asked the rookies at the Ricky. I don't remember what we called it. Symposium. Yeah, it was something. Uh, 
But I asked the rookies who was the best athlete ever between Deion Sanders, Bo Jackson, and LeBron James. I, I got I got varying answers, Nate. Yeah, but you know what? Uh, we got to see Bo Jackson and Dion. That's why we can compare them to other sports, but we didn't get to see LeBron uh, in another sports, sport. I yeah. didn't. Yeah. Uh, you know, like I tell people, a lot of people don't know Danny Ainge uh, used to be the general manager for the Celtics, was a dual sport guy. You know, uh, did, 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 I, used, I saw Dion run track. You know, over Florida State, I, I've seen Dion do multiple things, man. And uh, you know, like I tell people, man, O. Jackson could take a bat and break it across his thigh. I do. You know how hard a wooden oh, bat I know. is. You know how. You I know. know. Me, I, I, I tried that one time. I blew, blew out. I like, Lord, stop. Yeah, I told myself, stop. You got a thigh bruise for weeks. Bold. Thigh bruise yeah. for weeks. I'm mad. I'm mad at myself. Like, come on, man. Bo must know a trick. I don't know. You know. Jeez. He was Bo. Bo was special, man. Oh no. Bo was yeah. And see, because I tell people this right here, it ain't no greatest athlete. Mm. It, you know, uh, great running back just recently passed away. Uh, Jim Brown. Jim Brown. Played rugby, I think it was rugby, rugby or lacrosse, yeah. one of them. Yeah, he was on a basketball team at Syracuse. This dude was multiple sports. So I, I, I tell people, all this, the greatest, I, I, I be like, yes. nah, God is giving people so many different attributes and so many different uh, qualities. You know, start with that greatest. Oh, he's the greatest of all time. Stop, yeah, man. Yeah. This kid at uh, Jokovic that just won with Denver, they trying to rate this they kid. They trying to compare him to Akeem Olajuwon. These, oh, yeah, I, I'm like, stop, fellas. <laughs> you you don't have nothing to talk about nope. besides something. No, no, this kid will have his place in history if he stays right. healthy and continue to be the great human that he is. He'll have his place in history. Will Chamberlain did has you, did, his place in history. Did you see his, yeah. his response, Nate, to the to the celebration? <laughs> I mean, I saw him hugging it, all the no. guys, hugging the he other. He want to go home. But, he don't I give mean, a doggone about that trophy or the celebration. They said they told that boy. They told him that he. They said something about the parade. He said the parade. When yeah. is the parade? They said Thursday. He said, oh, "I just want to go home." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, you you know what, man. When you give, I remember when we won our Super Bowl. Uh, I really didn't care about the parade, but I was smart enough not to say nothing about it. But I, man, I, I was like, "This is over. This season has been hard." You know, my celebration was with my teammates after the game. I went to the party. And Mr. Jones put on. I was really. I, I, I'm like Joker. I'm gonna yeah. go home. I'm like the Joker. I, let's go home, man. Shut it down. Let's go hang out with yep. the family. Reset. You know? It's time to reset. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Well, wow. Well, while they re, while they reset, Nate, we gonna go ahead and uh and tell Niagara that we did what? Yeah, we flushed another. We flushed one. another one. We flushed another. And uh, I think my toilet is on my last leg. I, I'm talking to my wife today. Ain't no more. We finna go get it fixed. I've been waiting on Niagara. I've been adjusting and moving it to the side and scared to move because Big Noon been flushing them down. It's time. <laughs> it's time. Niagara, yeah. stay, stay yeah, in the I'm reinforced gone. toilet. We need that new new. We don't yeah. we don't oh, need man, that old need school porcelain. We type. need some carbon fiber yeah. in there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Reinforced with some steel. Hey, hey y'all, there's been another episode. Let me tell y'all something. We see y'all next time. <laughs> Yes, sir. God bless you.